Hello, welcome to the Full Circle Podcast. This is the first one of the day in the world. Hello, world. This is um, Bugs, William Brandon Horn, the first. Um, the first Full Circle Podcast was about a year ago. A year and a half, maybe even two, actually. I don't even know, but... It was me and my buddy Pete. Shout out to Big Perk. Excuse me. Well, uh, that was a good shout out. Um, And the first time it was basically just us planning on talking, talking a bunch of crap. And when we did, we played Mario Kart. So listening back to those, it was actually a very good, a very good distraction. It kept us on point it kept the flow to the conversation versus us trying to think of what to say we were just going with the flow but um like i said that was a a year and a half ago and i've wanted to do podcasts in between with a couple friends and it it makes sense for us all to have these conversations. It makes us talk to each other better when you have recordings and you have a chance to, when you're bored, listen back to them. But it just, uh, it never happened. So I came to a point today, a point in my musical life, everything, where I just, I don't want to do anything but relate and at the end of the day that's why I make music is to relate with people and if I'm in a location where there's not many show opportunities or things like that I prefer to just link and talk to people and that's why I like throwing shows but there's not any not many opportunities and places to throw shows either so I took it upon myself to actually do a solo podcast and we'll see how this goes i'm literally looking in the top right corner of my bedroom right now uh just talking you know maybe maybe this will work out a little better but actually if i can tell you guys some facts right now right out front of my house there's about seven cop cars and I'm in a position with two, my front window in the front and my front window to the left of my house. They are both literally positioned so I cannot see what is happening with the police out there. So all I see is seven cop cars with three of their bright lights pointed in one direction. And I would love to know what's happening But they all seem pretty calm. They're all very calm, actually, if I might say that. So, I don't know, (laughs) actually, right now, because it's a rainstorm, if it's lightning outside or they're taking suspect pictures and they're just going to let them roam down my street afterwards. I don't know. We're in New Jersey. You never know what what these guys are doing out here. But (laughs) I don't know, actually. I saw one of my neighbors... Just run up to them and walk away with a cigarette lit. So, Jersey's Jersey's like that, you know? It's just, uh, you got a hillbilly over here. You got a, a guy who has a bunch of rabbits over here. You got this guy who is in Vietnam growing purple potatoes. And then you got a motherfucker like me with um, a beautiful mother. Just a striving musician. Who has a garden on the side of their house. Growing tomatoes. A lot of tomatoes if I might say. But. Yeah so I'm in a pretty. Pretty weird position. As a musician I just want to blast music. And make music. But at the same time I. Want to connect with people with the music. And recently there haven't. Haven't. Hasn't been many. Situations for me to connect with people musically, so I figured why not just talk and let's see what motherfucking happens. Let's see what comes out of my brain. Because if I'm completely honest with you guys, I grew up with a mama, mama with OCD as far as cleaning goes, and we have a 
spotless house my whole life. And I see her talking to herself when she cleans. You know? <laughs> Shout out to Mama. I fucking love her. But I think that made me realize that when I'm alone, I kind of have a lot of fucking fun. I just... I don't out loud talk to myself yet. Like, I'm not physically speaking to myself, but all day. I think all of us are lying to ourselves if we don't say that we're talking to ourselves. Like, I love me some me. That's why I like to party alone. I like partying alone because a drunk buggy, that's a fun buggy. So if I'm a drunk buggy with myself, it's like double the fun. So I, so I drink double the amount and it winds up being a terrible hangover, eating a bunch of food and being mad at myself. That's okay. That's a normal thing, I think. But I make some music about it. But what happens when that luck runs out, when that that talent of... Being able to form your emotions into music and enjoy it afterwards. I think that's where I'm at right now. Literally. I think that's why I'm talking into this microphone. I think right at this moment in my life, I squeezed myself musically dry. I want to perform. There's not many places to. I want to connect with people. So... I think right now I just hit a spot where I just need to talk, you know, like we all need to talk and I feel pretty weird right now. The fact that I'm facing a corner in my wall and I'm pretty much speaking. I hit that shit with my feet. I'm sorry. I'm pretty much speaking to a corner right now. Like there's literally if you guys can imagine me. Speaking to you, and you were two inches from my face. Like, usually, if we speak, you're about a, a foot away, at least. Now, imagine the wall being right there. Like, I I see nothing right now. I see a corner and a cup, a couple corners connecting. So, I see a bunch of corners, you know. And I'm just kind of rambling. And it... It it does feel pretty good actually. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I might I might I might be onto something right now. And I'm not gonna lie, my air conditioner's off. It's summertime in New Jersey, so we have air conditioners in the window. And I heard people talk outside, so I think the police cars are pulling off. So I'm just gonna do some uh investigating. Give me a second. I'm gonna walk over here. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Oh my god, this is not what I expected, you guys. So one guy walked up, no handcuffs, white guy, glasses, about five foot five, short guy, tucking his shirt in, just got in front of the police car in front of my house. I look over, three cops are searching two people two away, so... They've been sitting out front of my house for about 40 minutes. And they just searched them. They just spoke to them. They just... Hold on. They just put them all in the back of the car. So, I don't know if you guys can hear this. Little metal knocks. That's what it's been doing the whole time, too. It's been raining. So, that means they were just standing outside... Giving them the time of day and rain to talk about whatever they were talking about. And they still were all put behind the fucking car doors. And just like that, seven cops are gone. I could have been taking a nap that whole time and not even known. I could have just packed the bubbler, made it, been blasting a song... Open my front window to blow the smoke out the window and boom. 
even though it's it's like not decriminalized yet, but that's how shit is, man. Life is very fucking weird with how quickly things can come together and how quickly they can fall apart. It's very sad, actually. For instance, my DUI. A lot of people know I got a DUI. But that DUI got me stuck in my room, which made me learn how to edit all the music that you guys hear from me. But at the same time, now I'm stuck in my room. (laughs) Because all I'm doing is making music and I love it. But I feel like that's why I'm talking right now, too, is because I just I need to live life a little bit. It's. It's different for an independent musician. It doesn't matter how much passion you have. And it really doesn't even matter how many people support it. It it does boil down to the king and queen thing. Who you know. The royalty situations. There's always random moments where you could bump into this guy and he likes it and he shares it. But there's nothing like having your music, just you posting your song, right? And say, like, your cousin shared the song. And then just from those two shares, a motherfucker like Wiz Khalifa saw it, or Drake, and retweeted it. That one retweet would make my life, which would make everybody else's life around me like that's crazy the power that individual artists hold and I don't think that a lot of them understand it yet that and I'm I'm not saying artists it's not the artists who made it quote unquote job for the artists who haven't made it yet to To get them there. That's not what I mean. But. Ask those artists. How they got. And met who they met. They met a person who. Fucked with their vibe. So they invited them to this. And they went. And they did it. And etc etc. You know what I mean. It's always an OG thing. It's always. Someone who has a little more than that person and just decides to leave the door cracked. That's what it always is. Even with an investor. If the person is investing money in you, your label, whatever it is, that's them cracking the door for you. So an artist that it would literally take nothing from their catalog... And only add because them sharing a great artist. Now, I'm not saying everybody share Hungry. I'm saying, I, you know these big artists listen to music still. I mean, actually, I'm going to take that back right away because I don't listen to music. I don't listen to a lot of music at all. I only listen to jam bands. I don't listen to hip hop or anything because... It is very easy to be influenced by the sound, even like in punk bands and stuff like that. So I take I take that statement back. But that's that's actually why I'm doing this podcast, too, because I'm actually like I'm I'm getting to ramble and rant my thoughts that are just stuck in my brain. I need to get this fucking shit out because I'm stuck in my fucking room in my brain, my room and my brain. From now on, when I say my room, I mean my brain. Because that's pretty much where I'm fucking stuck. Literally. Physically. Mentally. All that shit. But, um... I think... I brought this up on the radio interview that I had... A week ago. Shout out to 91.7. Jersey. South. South Jersey. Down by the shore. It's a, it's a college radio station. But it's broadcasted. World. Like worldwide. Everywhere. 
But if you're down here, if you were on there, you heard it. And I brought up how older rock musicians like one of my idols, Dave Grohl, them saying and bringing up social media, like he hasn't gone into it, but I just a statement saying how Pro Tools helps a band and being online and promoting. And if they had that, then they would be way, way bigger, things like that. And that's that's just not sadly not true. I wish it was, but. Obviously, Pro Tools makes everything easier recording as far as setting up all the 16 channels of tracks because if some of you don't know, when you're recording live drums, you need a microphone under and above the snare, in and outside the kick drum. So that's four microphones wired right there. You need two overheads to capture the cymbals, one above the snare, one above the hi-hat. That's seven to eight microphones for the drums alone. So if you're recording a live band, and those are specific different microphones, so you still need all of these things. You still need to know how to mix and master and and make this sound how it's supposed to sound. You know what I mean? Because otherwise, every, otherwise everything is just going to sound meshed together. So what I'm saying is about Like, say, for instance, Nirvana came out right now. They would not pop. They wouldn't. If Foo Fighters came right now, they would not pop. The only reason they would is if they had a backing. And I'm only saying Nirvana and Foo Fighters because Dave Grohl's one of my fucking idols. And I only have a couple idols. So I go very hard on those motherfuckers. Because I expect a lot more. So going into that. Going into saying they those when you hear about Foo Fighters and you hear about people like them. Like they are constantly touring around america around europe and all these things and they're constantly making new music the difference between the foo fighters making a new album and kanye west making a new album is the foo fighters are them they interpret their lives a motherfucker like kanye west needs a travis scott for a few years needs And no, I'm not scared about saying any of this fucking shit because it's facts. Listen to the order of how they dropped their shit. How long Travis had to sit in the cut before he could drop something. And the second he did, it was fire, but it was super... It wasn't as original because Kanye had already taken that style from being in the studio. Now, being in the studio with him, obviously, look at Travis Scott right now. Obviously, did it help him? Yeah. But think about all the other musicians and artists that those people worked with at that time. All the other influences. None. No names. I don't know any. I don't know who did the artwork. I don't know who did the videos. I don't know anything. And you know what? I don't care. Why? Because they don't. I really, really care about the whole meaning behind everything. I don't give a fuck about how artsy you got in the video. If I know behind the scenes that the shit is fucking, it's bullshit, I don't care how much money you spend. I don't care about any of that. It's all bullshit. It really is. And it's cra- it's crazy how how like little kids are just and this is the thing I don't even know any little kids so I don't even know if these are facts I don't know if like what's really trending is trending because of the algorithm nothing that's mainstream is really what people want to hear nobody watches TV now like. All of the things that we see that are perceived to be what is quote unquote what is not even what it is. And I guess this is part of the reason I started this fucking podcast by myself because 
when I talk to other people about things that I'm ranting about right now, it just it's some of them understand, some of them don't, some of them a lot of people don't even have a conversation. They just listen and respond. No, they don't even listen. They hear and respond and want to be heard. Like that's the thing about music that I love is when I'm on stage and I'm talking and rapping. That's my moment. That's when I get to say how I feel without doing what I'm doing now, ranting. I get to put it in a poetic, artistic form for you to literally feel and see me perform. I get to paint a picture along with the music videos. That's that's why I make music. It's only to connect. So, yeah, I guess this is for that same reason, to connect on the other level, on the other levels as far as convos go. Because when I talk to people after shows and when it's a lot of like you're you're really good, you're like, I'm not I'm not really well at handling that as far as the uh, props, like giving like saying I did a well job. Like. I more or less just like kind of, I try to shove that thanks back to the person who's saying it because it's just an energy thing. You know what I mean? If, if I go on stage by myself and I know there's one person in the crowd, I'm not going to be whack, but I am going to give the energy that I read that person needs. You know what I mean? You can tell when a person wants to headbang. Or not. You can tell when a person wants a hug or not. It's very simple. All you have to do is look. Look at the person. Just wait until they look at you. A lot of people give you this weird, confused, mean look. But that's just a normal face. You know, rest, bitching, bitch, resting, whatever the fuck it's called. Resting bitch face. Everyone has that. That's just a normal reaction as far as just your face being regular when you look around, you know? And a lot of the times when when I lock faces with people, I do that that quote unquote white person face. Where they like put their lips together mm, and they flatten that bitch out and like <laughs> we're like we're smiling. As a white person, that's that's nothing more than laziness. We're basically saying hi, saying, hey, we're a nice person. We acknowledge that you're a human being, but we don't feel like smiling all the way. We don't feel like saying a word. So we're going to give you the, hmm, you know, that, yeah, I know you're a person, you know? That's what every white person does. It's so funny. Because, dude, I'm a white person. And when I walk white by white people... They do it, and I do it hard as fuck, and it makes me so happy because it's it, it's honestly hilarious. Like, and that's when you look into cultures, and when you break the word culture down, it's your cult. So when you break that down, your cult, at the end of the day, like, what? Like, you're talking about, like, a group of people that do specific things, so, like, they're assholes because of it. No, that's just what they do. That's one thing about being prideful about it. It's another thing about being cocky about it. Like, when we walk by people, we do that, hmm. Like, other other cultures, when you think about it like that, I can't really think about many like gestures that they do as they walk by. Like I know a head nod. I think that's kind of a general a general public thing, but as far as just a generic thing when you walk by someone, I think white people only have that g- generic gesture as far as that that weird ass flat lip smile. It's fucking great. <laughs> it's fucking great. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> we only do it because we don't feel like saying anything else. That's why. 
Otherwise, everybody else is just walking by each other just like, hmm. You know? Just like... And if that's the case, everybody's mean mugging each other. And if you think someone's mean mugging you when you walk by, you walk by mad. You walk by, you're like, damn, what the fuck is wrong with everybody? Everybody's just looking at me. But how about a... Hmm. Like a... Like a... Hey, I see you. Like, I see you. Like, what's that thing in Avatar? It's not that spiritual, but that's pretty much what it is. It's a psychological thing. It's just letting people know that we want to say hi. We want to shake your hand. We want to give you a hug, but we know that's too much. So we just do that. (laughs) That's so great. I don't know what I was talking about before that, but I'm sure I had something important I was saying, but yeah, it's the first one, so we're just seeing where my brain goes. That's great. The cops left. That's great. That's a great thing. I don't know how many of anybody will ever listen to that any of this but cops on the east coast mm 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 it doesn't matter who where what you are nope and i'm just going to say right now i'm not going to talk about them ever because i don't I want to give them any of my life more than they fucking took already as far as being locked up in a cell from a DUI for hours and hours and bullshit on. There's definitely still 12 year old kids getting arrested for like a roach of weed. If that's the case, if a kid gets caught with a roach of weed now, He needs double what I got because the weed that I had then was not as good as the weed right now. So (laughs) when I was 12 years old, bro, if I had the weed that I had right now when I was 12 years old, I don't think I would have grown like literally like. The percentage that went up from the general public's THC point of view. It's crazy, dude. I had a picture sent to me today of the um, fucking middies. That brick Philly weed. Oh, my God. Black and uh, black and brown and terrible colored seeds just shoved in the way that this weed was packaged. It's called brick weed, if no one knows, because it was literally like a brick. It was shoved and stuffed so much in a paint container that it took the shape of the container but became so dense that it was like a rock. And you could not break it up. And if you used a grinder, you... Couldn't turn it more than two times because all the stems got stuck in it. And if you did, all the seeds broke in half. And if anybody smoked a blunt with a seed burning, they know how that smells. Fuck the taste. The headache is ten times worse than both of those combined. It's crazy. But the fact that I was a 13-year-old stoner... It didn't really matter that much because I was stoned. Like, <laughs> I don't know what. I, I don't even. I don't. There's no way I could have been that stoned from that stuff. And that's what I'm saying. Maybe since I was a little kid, it hit me more than. Not even tolerance wise. If you were a 25 year old right now who never smoked in your life and you smoke some of that brick weed right now, it would not. It it might make you sick, honestly. But if right now you never smoked in your life and you smoke some good weed, 
you'll be a stunner for sure <laughs> for the rest of your life. <laughs> oh, geez, that's crazy. Thinking about how bad that weed was. Oh, and I was, tr- I was selling a lot of weed, dude. A lot of weed as a little kid. I was. It was crazy, honestly. And I'd like, I was the generation. I'm the half. Like, I am in half of um, no technology and having it. Like, from 6th grade to 8th grade, it was AIM. AOL Instant Messenger. A-I-M dot com. And before that, it was strictly AOL. Like that. I'm going to add the noise right now. Yeah, that that shit. And that was only that only lasted for two years. But as a kid, two years is like when you're growing up from eight years old, ten years old, eight years old, that year is like four years. Ten years old, it's like three years. Twelve years old, it's like two, you know. By the time you hit fifteen, sixteen, you realize, oh shit, like everything's only a year. You know, and I'm 27 right now, bro. It's getting weeks, man. A year feels like a week. I, I'm i talking about feeling for real. Like this shit is gone, bro. Like I'm 27. I'm gone. I'm done. Um, I think I think I'm not going uh, <laughs> to want to experience things as much like I'm not sad about it you know I'm I'm ready to like live live now is what I mean I'm not I'm not hindered by the thought of thinking I need to experience this or that I think I experienced what I need to and now I'm ready to capitalize on it and really live it to the fullest, but in a way that can help other people versus me being where I wanted to be right away at 19 years old, which I'm 27 now. I honestly wouldn't be here. I definitely wouldn't. So I do believe everything happens for a reason in a weird way, in a sense that like lessons It's also, it's like that half and half thing. I do believe that's a very comfy thing to tell yourself. There's also got to be a form of um, acknowledgement, understanding that you're the reason that something that you didn't want to happen happened. So, yeah, I'm not saying that I'm at that moment where, like, I'm I'm just completely oblivious and blind. I'm literally at that moment where I know everything I did, everything. And I'm just to a point where I think talking to y'all, and I, I don't think this will get any views. This won't, people won't even, like, it's not like I'm Joe Rogan or somebody with a big following just starting a podcast. Like, I'm a musician who doesn't even get many views doing this. So maybe this will be something special to listen back to in a couple years when, when I'm, excuse me, where my, where my brain envisions me to be. And that'll be a cool thing. But um, maybe it'll humble myself, but. That's actually one of the things I pride myself on is being humble. That's why I try to make so many genres of music as a solo artist with the band. It's because it's a constant challenge. It's it's always a new thing. We all don't feel the same every day. Sometimes we're tired. Sometimes we're sad. That's how I make music and... As far as moods go, that's the sounds, that's the surroundings, the people you're around. And sometimes you need to make that. You need to 
you haven't laughed in a long time, sometimes you just need to make something goofy to laugh. And when you laugh, it'll attract other people who want to laugh, and then you'll just wind up laughing. So a lot of my music is a venting. A lot of it is um, explaining things to people, but most of it is striving. It's me striving for a relationship with a woman that I really want. It's me striving to laugh. It's me striving to dance. That's literally what what it all is. And I get that again, I guess that's why it boils into this. I'm striving for connection. I make music at the end of the day connect to connect with people. So that explains why I'm again talking into a corner right now, into a microphone with no LED lights, nothing to look at. I'm just I'm just talking, pretty much venting. And I think I think this would help a lot of people. A lot of people don't understand how how angry they are just because of the daily things that they see. And I don't think people talk to themselves like like I am right now. Just because this is being recorded right now doesn't mean I don't talk to myself all day. Like I said, OCD as far as cleanliness and germaphobe wise got that from my mama. But when I saw my mama cleaning the house, I saw her talking to herself. So she's it's a form of medication in a way. Like she was constantly reassuring herself with the decisions she made. Now, it's a little different if you physically do it. You might seem like a fucking lunatic, (laughs) which I am, which she is, which my dad is. We all are. We're all fucking crazy. We all want things a certain way. We all like certain things as far as sound, taste, everything. And that's, that's my family. That's like blood I should want what they want right I'm the first musician no one not cousins not uncles not great 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 grand granddaddies and mommies no one in my family tree ever made any music I'm the first one and I'm pretty much the first one that's really Not researching the family tree because obviously I only know my family tree because of my granddad and certain motherfuckers that really did the research. I, like the people though, I was interested in who the person was, what they did, how their personality was. You know what I mean? And I was really expecting to have some sort of music. Nothing. Literally, I have no musical influence in my family at all. So it, it's, I guess that it, that does make sense why I love all of it. Because they, since no one had a major influence, everybody kind of found their own. So I have two older sisters. My oldest sister listens to, um, like, um, uh, what was it? Uh, Gwen Stefani's band. What was that? Uh, how do I forget? It was like one of my favorite bands growing up as a kid too. The Gwen Stefani. No doubt. No doubt. Yes. Oh my Lord. My oldest sister would bang that when I was like three, four years old. And that that shit was amazing. But at the same time, my mom would play Luther Vandross and Babyface and shit like that. And then my middle sister, my oldest sister was 10 years older and my middle sister was seven years older. So she would play like DMX and shit like that. So I got the R&B smooth mixed with the rough rap hip hop mixed with the punk grunge rock. That was just a listening influence, nothing that I understood. When I got to the point to understand music, the first thing I got was Missy Elliott. The second thing was like Busta Rhymes, Ludacris, and Eminem. And at that time, 
dude, like, it's it, it actually makes me so excited thinking about this when when I think about all the music I made and this this podcast will make a lot of sense when a lot of people heard my music and they listened back and I have all this stuff released. But you guys will see these individual influences. It's so it's not a bad thing that of how my family was so spread apart. Because now when I bring in my dad, he listened to like techno, straight up disco, dance music. That's actually how my my dad and mom met. They met at a dance club. So that's, uh, that's definitely why I love dance music. Dance music is the best, dude. It brings people together. It brought my mom and daddy together. But... If you combine all that, I guess that it, that does explain my influence of why I make and pride myself on attempting to make every and any genre. And I think in 2019, there's not really any other direction to go but combining it all. Because as far as rap goes, there's boom bap, trap, trip hop. As far as rock, there's classic rock, reggae, ska. As far as uh, EDM, there's Deep House. There's a form of trap, EDM, etc. You know what I mean? Every genre has subgenres. So I think we're at a point with technology where like, no new sounds can really be created. And I cannot fucking stand... These motherfuckers sampling samples. Like, you're dropping a song in 2019 that was sampled in 2009 from something that was sampled in 90... Oh my god, dude, it's so fucking bad. Make your own... Paint your picture. I understand influences, but still... And I understand hip hop was made from samples, but stop. Uh, just stop. Just start making your own fucking music and melodies and dances and statements and oh my fucking God. And this that goes into conspiracy shit of how the labels are controlling shit and how they scrambled to get back in control when the digital age became and all my generation – Stop buying CDs and started streaming the music for free, essentially stealing it. When I was a kid, I never thought that I was going to make music. So I never thought about the impact of just downloading uh, mixtapes from random websites with all the all the new releases. So I never thought about how that really would change the game, period. But it also did make so many artists, as far as underground go, that wouldn't have been popular as huge as fuck because their mixtapes were just being spread around because they were being burned, not because they were being bought or played by the mainstream media. So there was a small gap in time where what the old rock bands and something like Foo Fighters were saying makes sense is like they wish they had this then. But that's a very small example, Razor Phone 2007, iPhone 2010, three years. Like, and example, one year CDs, next year, everything being stolen off a of Napster. Like, it's it was a very quick transition. Even before this, though, bands... And people make artists making money or doing it from streams or not. Oh my gosh. See, this is how robotic they got these motherfuckers right now. Me, Jesus fucking Christ. They were making money from shows and merchandise sales. So if rock bands and artists aren't getting shows and they're not getting their own merch, then they're not making money. But if you're not getting shows and merch, Then you're not, what I just said, making money. So now you got a pocket where people are charging artists to perform 
guaranteeing these outlets and repercussions as far as um, recognition goes. And it's a lie. So the artists aren't making money off of merch tables and performing. They're spending $500 to perform six minutes in front of a crowd of 10-year-olds that have a phone that aren't even on Instagram because they can't have one yet. Like... This the scheme and how this shit is happening in rap is so crazy. And the fact that the bigger DJs right now are resampling samples from eight years ago and the big rock bands who are making new albums and going on tours are not looking for local dope bands to maybe, hey, one tweet. New fucking career. Dude. If they broke it down to 50 cities, which is the fucking country, that's 50 bands, and that's not even nearly as many as that are worth being hearing. It's just about who you know. So, like, I'm not saying, like, hit me up, hit my band up. I'm saying just fucking listen to the shit. Like... Be aware of what you did. What, like, the OGs have such a greater role than they think. Like, you creating new albums and new ways to create them and new influences and blah, blah. That's great and dandy. But you are not going to sit here and tell anybody who's trying to achieve somewhat of what y'all did, you're not going to tell us we didn't do the fucking research and see how y'all got where you were. It's because of who you know, who you met, who you linked with at at that time, how the times were, how the music was received at that time. But this moment, the past four or five years are very, very different musically. There is no room and there's no room because the OGs don't realize the power that they have. And maybe it's because they're stuck in deals from 15, 20 years ago. Maybe that's why. But if they really cared about rock and roll, if they really cared about hip hop, if they really cared about any form of their cult being carried on, Which is one of the reasons I make music. I make music because I want to dance and laugh, obviously. But what's the one thing every human really wants? Immortality. Everybody wants to be immortal. And as far as entertainment goes, with technology and music and being stuck in people's brains, that's an inevitable way of being immortal. And it sounds very selfish, but dude, I'm a human. I want people to remember me. I want to leave a legacy behind. I want people to learn from my mistakes. I want people to be better. I don't want people to make my mistakes. So maybe if they hear my song before a moment like that in their life comes up, they'll remember that lyric and be like, oh shit, you know? Or if they're going through it and they hear that, they'll realize... I'm not alone, which I'm sure they already know, but they'll realize, you know, at the end of the day, it's for a hug. At the end of the day, what do we all want to do? Survive, laugh, smile, hug, and make some motherfucking babies, dude. (laughs) I don't know. I don't know, man. This shit's so weird because I know for a fact so many people would be down to give me a hug right now. And you know what? I need about a million of them. I need every hug I can get. And I haven't... I haven't physically, like, touched anybody in, like, a week. 
And I'm a musician, dude. Like, I'm performing. Like, I'm... It's... That's what I mean. Like, there's... We're so disconnected from each other. We work five days to live for two. It doesn't make sense. We should be living to live. Straight up. I don't understand this shit. I don't understand death. And I'm never going to understand life. So that's, I guess, another reason why I just make the music, you know? To, uh... To try and fucking connect with you people, dude. Because all this technology... I sold my PS4 two years ago. I was online playing video games with people. Like, it wasn't... No, that's not shit, dude. I wasn't connecting with people. I was arguing. I was trying to beat them. The fuck up in Madden and 2K. Which, by the way, I will beat anybody. Even on my two-year rust. But... But I, I had to get rid of it. I had to sell it. I, I got rid of it. And that's when I really, really honed in on my music. And it was a great year and a half, two years. But the past month, I realized that I am kind of ran out right now as far as music goes. As far as I can skip diddly do you guys a song like that. It'll be gold. I'll shit the gold out. But it won't feel right. So that's why I'm doing this right now. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe you guys will connect with a lot of what I said. Maybe I'll sound like a douchebag. Maybe I'll delete this in a day. Maybe I'll delete it in a year. Maybe I'll do this every fucking day. (laughs) Who knows? But I don't really know what else to uh, to say as far as right now goes. Let's see what this is looking like. I kind of want to just come on, wanted to just come on and vent and see how it went. I'm at a good 50, 53 minutes right now. An hour is what I'm going to aim for every time. So, yeah, maybe maybe I'll give this one a listen back and I'll see how I like how I like it if I if I actually say things I wanted to and then I'll I'll be able to branch off that in the second one. And maybe we'll go from there, dudes. So, if anybody listened to this, thank you. If you uh, didn't, you probably will when I die. So, talk to you soon, dude.